Many of you probably wonder what it's like to work in an analysis lab. Whether it be data science for cybersecurity or just being a malware analyst or a security operation center analyst. All of these jobs in some ways have many similar traits to them or to each other rather. And something to know about if you are working in a cybersecurity job that essentially requires you to do data science, then your goal is to understand where all of the data that you need to collect is for say certain projects and then come up with a way to make that data valuable. Usually you start with knowing what your results that you're trying to get are and then you go and find data to support whatever that is. Uh, but in many cases, let's say there is a breach, it's in some ways similar to forensics if you're working in say the case of a breach where a company gets breached, everyone wants to know how did this happen, how can we prevent this from happening in the future. And so say a malware analyst or a cybersecurity data scientist, which in a lot of ways is the same thing, I'm just going to call it all data science, you work in a cybersecurity lab, because what you're doing is you're scraping data, structuring the data, manipulating the data in ways that's relevant or important, and it's kind of like a puzzle. Like if you like puzzles and you like trying to figure things out and try to figure out like where the things go, like that's that's kind of what it's like working in a cybersecurity lab. And then when you create the bigger picture, then you create graphs that people can read that are in support of you know, why in the world are we doing data science analytics in the first place? It's usually for a reason like, why did this breach happen once again? Oh, this breach happened because now we can tell a story because we've scraped enough data and now we use that data we scraped to represent something that businesses actually care about because data without context is useless. I'm just gonna say it. If you just have a bunch of data, anyone could just sit and scroll through their Windows logs, and if they don't know what they're looking for, I'll be like, well, I see some logs. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I don't even know why I care. I'm just looking at some logs. But if you are trying to figure out why a computer keeps crashing, and you're trying to represent the information to someone else who maybe is building computers, say there's a company like Apple or something. This is not cybersecurity. This is just an example of data science analytics. Well, someone's trying to build a computer, certain computer models are crashing and testing, so then someone who might be a data scientist might scrape, why does this happen, what do we need to do, and then tell a story for what might actually help prevent the crash so that people can then go and manufacture a better product. That's scraping data for a valuable purpose that businesses are willing to pay for, and as a result, these jobs help companies make a lot of money or protect companies from losing a lot of money uh, because data science in a lot of ways goes back to being similar to forensics because you're scraping information for a purpose but the difference between forensics and data science is that data science a lot of times and oftentimes is dedicated to companies who just want to get a little bit of root cause on something that's happening but it's not say court worthy or mission critical or especially when companies are trying to figure out how to make more money if you've ever done Facebook advertising for example and you're looking at say pixels and you're trying to figure out what products people buy more and you're looking at the numbers for some ads you ran and you're saying oh more people clicked on these ads and people have all these crazy terms that's a form of data science so if you're a data scientist for say like a company that develops cybersecurity tools you might be helping them figure out what are people trying to do with the product the most are they using this feature that feature are people not using certain features uh, what, what are some requests that people keep asking for and is this a common trend for people to ask about this or complain about it so that we can prioritize what features to develop first, what features we probably can discontinue that no one seems to use. It's a, you know less than 1% utilization for certain features that cost a lot for a company to support. At the end of the day, this is data science. It's a very dizzying type of job. And then once again, a lot of analysts in many ways are data scientists in the cybersecurity space. They don't call it that. 
If you've ever done both, you're gonna be like, this is the same job. And then everyone's gonna disagree with you and then people are going to tell you that you don't know what you're talking about and especially if they haven't done it and they're like, no, 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 it's, you know, it's not the same and you'll run into a lot of that, but just don't tell people that it's all called data science at the end of the day. Don't tell people that an analyst and a data scientist do the same job even though data scientists make a lot more money on average than analysts. So if you can figure out how to transition your analyst title to data scientist, your salary generally goes up, especially if you're actually good. The downside of being a data scientist is you oftentimes have to prove your own value to a company because if the work that you do doesn't drive results frequently enough or help them generate money and capital, then either they'll just fire you or try to repurpose you or something along those lines. So there's a lot that goes into thinking about that, but uh, hint, hint, for those of you who are analysts, consider a title change because it's the same job. Stop wasting your time. But now you know. Now you know. And how do you get started doing that type of work? You can start off as an analyst. For those of you who don't work in cybersecurity yet, now you know that too. So why don't you go and get the job now so that you can become a data scientist and make that bread. Anyways, data scientists can make anywhere from, oftentimes they make six, over six figures in the cybersecurity space and oh, I've met some who make $500,000 a year at most, $300,000 a year for a few. Um, it's more common that you're looking at like a hundred to $180,000 a year, but oh man, I'm doing the wrong work. If you like the video and you like my content, please subscribe and also welcome. If you did like the video, give me a like. And if you don't, that's okay if you don't give me a like too.